How is this able to run Modern Warfare? Hey there guys, Nick here, back in the video. Today we're talking about NVIDIA GeForce Now. And I know a lot of people don't really know what that is and that's why I'm making this video. GeForce Now is NVIDIA's attempt to bring gaming to the streaming world where it's no longer physical media or in this case downloading media to your computer, but actually streaming it. You've probably heard of it in beta for a few years, but now it's actually out and it's kind of a big deal. Streaming games isn't a new thing with Apple Arcade and Google Stadia. It's been a big craze nowadays, but GeForce is doing a completely different thing. You know, with Apple and Google Stadia, you're either paying for a subscription service to have the games that are available or with Google Stadia, which is really annoying, is you're paying for a subscription service and then you have to rebuy the games. And Nvidia, they didn't like that. They said, let's do something completely different from the ground up. Now the program's available for both Mac and PC and the way it works is it allows you to play the games that you already own provided that you already own them. Let's say you just got a MacBook Air, but from your PC days, you own Overwatch and you wanna play it, but you know your MacBook's not gonna be able to run it. Well, simply download GeForce Now, open up Overwatch, and then when you open it up, it'll ask you to actually log into your account. I do wanna clarify though that you need to own the games. It's not like you're paying a subscription service to have a bunch of games. You're really just paying for the system. So today I'm gonna to talk about the good, the bad, and who is this really for? Let's start off, like usual, with the good. Now starting off with the good, GeForce Now is actually one of the first systems that actually allows you to stream games very, very well. Compared to things like Parsec or Shadow, this system is designed simply for games and people have been using Parsec and Shadow to play games, but it's not quite the same system. Those systems is virtual desktops. This is really just streaming that one game that you want. And everything is well optimized for those games. These servers that are running your games remotely somewhere else are super powerful. They have insane amounts of internet bandwidth, so your games will be buttery smooth if you're playing online. You have the frames to back it up, you have the processing to back it up, so those servers are not underpowered at all, and you really are getting an amazing experience. To be honest, an experience that I've never even tried out. In my testing, I ran Rainbow Six Siege at completely maxed out settings and still got close to 200 frames per second because that's how insane these servers are. What I was really interested about is how is it gonna run in the real world? Do I have to have a good machine overall or can I just use the bottom of the line machine and still get good results? And that's why for the most part, I did test with my Surface Go because this thing for as great as it is, is a tablet and is very underpowered. It actually does have the minimum specs really needed to be technically a computer. In using it and doing all my tests though, I've realized that in GeForce Now, it's basically the same as if you were streaming a YouTube video or a Netflix show or maybe playing a browser game. So if your computer is currently watching this video at its 1080p or even 4K that I uploaded at, or if you watched the latest Netflix original, or if you do enjoy your little browser games of Super Smash Flash, then your computer can definitely handle GeForce Now no problem. A bigger issue that a lot of people are worried about, especially when they play games, and I was worried about was the latency because this is what really makes or breaks an experience. Now a lot of people worry about how Nvidia handles delay and honestly I was the same way because it is a big deal because when you're playing a fast paced game like Rocket League or Rainbow Six Siege or Overwatch or even a rhythm game, I actually tested a rhythm game on this because that's the one you need the most precision, it actually did quite well. In my testing I tried wired internet and wireless internet, I didn't really get a big difference. The main thing was your internet speed at the moment because I did try it at two different locations with two different internet speeds and it made a huge difference. Nvidia recommends between 30 and 50 megabits per second and honestly, that's what I have and it worked really, really well. I think the delay I had was I think maybe one to two milliseconds and that's all. The resolution was perfect, there was no tearing, there was no pixelations or artifacting and it ran with a one to two millisecond delay which maybe some professionals would notice but I genuinely couldn't notice it and it didn't affect me where I was like, oh, my shots are missing or oh, I can't control properly. Now Nvidia has claimed that they could run GeForce Now at something as low as 15 megabits per second which is actually the base internet that you can actually pay for from any service provider and you're not gonna find anything slower than that. And they claim that they could run. The issue is the lower in megabits you get, the lower your speed gets, you'll be sacrificing image quality and delay. And actually in a place where I was at 
18 or 19 megabits per second, I was getting an eight millisecond delay, which you genuinely felt. I was playing Rocket League with my controller and you genuinely felt like really sluggish. Honestly though, the average person does have 30 to 50 megabits of internet at their house. If you don't know what internet you do have, I'll link speedtest.net in the description below. That's where you can just test your internet and you wanna hope for something higher than 30. In my testing, I didn't get anything worse than one to two milliseconds. Like I said, somebody might notice it out there who is like a competitive player, but don't expect to go pro if you're using GeForce now. I play casually and I really like the experience. I've been talking a lot of good about this product, but now it's time to get to the bad because these bad things might still affect you depending who you are, I don't really know. So I haven't really mentioned the price yet until now because the price isn't bad, it's just Nvidia's marketing is not good at all. The price for GeForce now is $4.50 per month. That is the standing price and honestly, I don't see a problem with it, it's quite good. It's actually a steal, again, compared to a Parsec and Shadow, you're actually getting a really good deal. The issue is, this is their paid version. There's also a free version, but I don't really like it, and I know a lot of people are gonna Google GeForce Now, see that free version and try it, and then compare that to what they could have gotten if they used the paid version. I haven't tried the free service because I have been on the paid service the entire time, but it's amazing. I log on, I put in the game I want to play, I have to log in my credentials because it does reset every time, which is kind of weird, but then I'm in the game and I can just play for hours and hours and I don't feel an issue at all. The free one, however, has this really annoying limitation where when you launch a game, you can only play for 60 minutes. That is the length of your play session. Now, not forever, you can actually re-log in no problem. The issue with this free version is that after your 60 minute play session, you get logged off and you can simply go ahead and relaunch the game. But because of its limited servers and there are they are adding servers more and more every day, so it's not even gonna be an issue anymore. But because of their limited servers, you actually have a little wait period. And that honestly sucks because I'm sitting here right now talking about why GeForce Now is so amazing. You're gonna go download it, use the free version, play 60 minutes of any game that you wanna play, and then when you get logged out, have to wait, what, maybe 20, 30 minutes just to get back on the server. You probably have to wait 20 to 30 minutes in the first place to get on, you play for an hour, and you have to wait again. So it's basically saying every hour, you have to wait half an hour to play for another hour, and it's just a mess. Now I applaud Nvidia for giving a free option to people, and you know maybe for people who just wanna try it out, but the thing that boggles my mind is, if you wanna try it out, just use the paid version trial period. Now I don't know how long it's gonna go on for, but if you subscribe to the paid version of GeForce Now today, you have the first three months free. So if after the first three months, you don't like it, you can just cancel and they won't even charge you. Nvidia should honestly just have a paid version and that's it. That's just my opinion, but that was just the main thing about pricing. Another really big issue for Nvidia was they released an Android app for GeForce Now, which I thought was cool in theory. Everyone thought was cool in theory until you open up the app and realize this is not what you want at all. When you open up GeForce Now and launch a game on your Android phone or tablet, you're gonna have on-screen controls, which suck. For some reason, phones just tend to have more latency, so I think instead of one to two milliseconds, you're getting three or four, which also sucks. And just overall, it's not a good experience and not worth your time. The main reason I hate on the app though is because Nvidia had GeForce Now in beta test for Mac and Windows and said, yes, this is to replace your hardware solutions. The issue is they decided, let's create an on-the-go solution for people who wanna play when they're on the bus or on the train or whatever they're doing. And the issue for that is the amount of internet it actually uses. If you crank the resolution all the way down and crank the overall quality all the way down, you're still using four gigabytes an hour. Now I tested 4G LTE internet speeds and they're over 30 megabits per second. So if you really wanna play on the go while on the train, go ahead, you could run it. But unless you're paying for an unlimited data plan, you're gonna get cut off instantly. You only have about an hour for four gigs of data. And a lot of my people I know only have four gigs of data for the month. The app is so bad though, I don't even wanna waste my data on it. All right, we spoke about the good, we spoke about the bad, but at the bottom line, who is this for? What is this service for? The main answer is simple. People who wanna play the games, but don't have the hardware, but still have the internet, because quite a lot of people do still have the internet. Actually, internet plans over 30 megabits per second are quite common. Again, speedtest.net, down in the link in the description below, so you can test your internet, but odds are a lot of people do have it for a very low price, but a lot of people don't really have the hardware to, or you know, the funds 
to build a gaming PC and, and, and play these AAA titles, this might be a good solution for them. You know, maybe they don't know they're into video games and they use this as a test run and then they'll eventually build their own machine. Who knows? And my last sort of group of people is kind of what I fall into and why I'm gonna keep using GeForce now is you like playing games, but you don't play them enough that you wanna keep them stored on your computer and have them downloaded at all times. You know, in my situation, I play games a lot, but I play on different consoles and I'm not always playing Rocket League. You know, I'll, I'll spend like a week playing Rocket League and then I just won't touch it for a couple months and I don't wanna have that always downloaded on my system. It's kinda nice to just go back to it whenever I wanna play it and have it ready and it's not on my system taking up space. Overall though, this could be the way the future is heading. Instead of investing in the latest graphics cards or latest processors, you're investing in the latest innovations of the internet. Instead of dropping a thousand or two thousand dollars to build a machine that can play any game you want, you're just investing a little bit more money to get gigabit internet at your house instead of your basic 50 megabits. Anyways guys, what do you think about this? Have you tried it? Have you heard about it? Do you want to try it after watching this video? And let me know in the comments down below. I want to hear from you. As usual, like the video if you did enjoy it. And if you haven't yet, feel free to subscribe for new videos every single week and new streams every single week. Anyways guys, I'm Snake. See you in the next one. Peace out.